I was talking to my friend and then he mentioned that devil is here to take his job. Okay, that, Devin, not devil. So basically we got a new platform or a new AI tool which claims to be the first AI software engineer. So when you say uh, AI software engineer, which simply means that it is going to replace all the humans or all the human developers, is it the case? Let's talk about it. So from past few days, I'm, wherever I go, it can be Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, all the platforms are talking about the same thing. So people are posting about this new tool, which might replace the developers. I mean, that's what the company claims, right? Because as a developer, what is your job? Your job is to build applications. And when you do it, of course, you will face errors, you will face bugs. And then Devin says, I cannot simply build an application, but also if there's some bugs, I will resolve it. That's what they claim. Again, they have tested in their own environment. I'm not sure once we have the access to it, will it be able to do it? That's something we have to wait and watch. But the thing is, if you really think about Devin as a software engineer, is it really a software engineer? Now let's go back to the world where people used to write code on a simple editor. It can be a notepad. In fact, I started my career with notepad. In fact, I used to write a code on notepad, compile using Java compiler on the command prompt. Or maybe if you are working on C from a long time, you, have, you might have used Turbo C++. The thing is, all these tools, basically you as a programmer have to type a code. There's no help there. And slowly, the ecosystem started evolving for developers where we got help in the terms of syntax completion or debuggers and all these tools available, the testing tools available. There are a lot of tools available for you as a developer so that you can be more productive, right? And then still uh, things started changing with the AI tools. So the end of last or last year, basically we got this new tool called ChatGPT. And then of course, with, uh, with a great marketing, not by them, but by the people, uh, everyone started talking about ChatGPT. Hey, you know, we don't need developers now. ChatGPT will give you the code. But then there's, a, there's one little problem here. Whenever you get these uh, suggestions from ChatGPT or whenever you get the code, most of the time it will not work. Of course, it will give you a code which almost complete, but as a developer, you have to look at the code, make some changes, and it will work. I mean, not just ChatGPT. Now we got Copilot, Google uh, GitHub Copilot. Uh, we got uh, AWS Code Whisperer. There are so many tools available, right? Which are a part of your IDE. Example, I use uh, Copilot a lot with my uh, IntelliJ for development, and then it helps me to complete the code. It helps me for the suggestions. And also we got a tool where it will create a project. You just give a prompt and it will give you the project. I tried it, but it never works. I, I, I have never got the comp a project which works on the first go. I have to make some changes. So is it really replacing developers? Uh, not exactly. Let's say if you have a team of five and now since AI is helping you, you might need a team of three people, right? Or two, right? Uh, in the best case. But the thing is, you need human developers to understand the code given by the AI tools, and most of the time they give you weird code which is not structured, which is not, which is not even a clean code, and then you have to refactor the entire code to make it work. Ultimately, you are spending enough amount of time. See, as time progresses, it will improve for sure. But then with Copilot, you can use it and you can make it work. You need an experienced developer who can make the changes. Okay, why I mention experienced developer here is because for a fresher, uh, you can write your own code, but then when someone else is giving their code to you, it's difficult to read for freshers. And that's why it takes some time for freshers to, to understand others' code. It may take one or two years, so you become an experienced developer. Uh, but that's the thing, right? Even if you want to use AI tool, you need expertise. And that's why we were happy with all this AI tool, because they were helping you. But now, we got Devin. And Devin says, okay, so I will give you the code. You'll be saying, hey, we are getting that from other tools as well. Now, Devin says, you don't even have to debug by yourself. I will do it for you as a human. Okay, so if you get, example, if you get the error, if you are facing some bugs, what you do, you write println statements to see which function is getting called, what is not getting called, and then you debug it in that way. Devin says, I will do the same thing. And we are a bit concerned now because if Devin can write a code, if Devin can debug a code, in fact, it also says that they can even deploy the code on the production. They also say that they can uh, find bugs in the open source projects. I mean, this is scary for developers, right? Because that's our job. And we are proud of being uh, developers, right? Or coders, you can say. 
But here's the thing, if Devin can do all those things for you, what you will do? Maybe there are a lot of negative things that are happening in the social media by saying they are going to replace you, you'll be jobless. But here's the thing, every new technology creates that perception that you are out of job. With blockchain, with cryptocurrencies, we thought bank are going obsolete. Uh, with uh, computers in year 2000, we thought all the other jobs are going to be obsolete because computer can do everything. But no, every time you got a new technology, you get new set of uh, vacancies, you get new set of uh, positions available, right? And with the AI, it will be. But still, when you talk about software engineering, it's not about coding. That's one of the big biggest misconceptions we have. So if you tell someone you're a software engineer, they directly relate you to code. And they are imagining you that the entire day you are sitting on your desk and typing code. No, that's not what we do all the time. Of course, we love writing code, but that's not what we do the entire day. I would say only 20% of our task is actually on keyboard. 80% goes here, right? And that's where human excel. AI can help you with the code. AI can help you debug the application. AI can give you some tips, some suggestions, but it cannot replace the human thinking yet. I'm saying yet is because I'm not sure what is going to happen in future, but at this point, AI cannot replace in terms of strategic thinking. See, ultimately when you build a software uh, or a solution, you give it to your client and your clients are human. And only human can think what others human want. And most of the time, your client has no idea what they want. They have a problem, you have to provide a solution to them. And most of the time, they don't even know the problem. They know there's something wrong, uh, so they, you will, they will consult with you and they will say, okay, this is a problem, this is something which you are facing. You have to understand the problem. You have to find a solution on paper. Of course, with your team members, you will discuss and find a solution and then, comes the coding part, which is the almost the last part. And that's the thing AI can help you with. All the other things are still humans who will do it. What about the software architecture? AI can give you tips, AI can help you with suggestions, but not the actual architect. There's something called emotions, there's something called human touch, there's something called gut feeling. We humans have that. AI is not programmed to have those feelings. And that's where the problem starts. Because if you see the entire world now, uh, whatever solution you are using, whatever services you are using, it started maybe with the help of get, gut feeling, maybe it's because of some emotions, maybe because of some problem which no one observed, someone observed the problem and tried to solve it, right? And that's the software engineering I'm talking about, not the actual coding. So who will code in future? Of course, AI will help you there. Maybe AI will give you the entire software but you have to understand the problem. You have to understand the architecture, what happens behind the scene, how the backend is going to be designed, how, how you're going to scale your application, everything you as a programmer has to define. Now question arises: if you're a fresher, of course, most of the problem is with the freshers because people who are experienced, they have seen a lot of technologies coming up and going and they have evolved themselves. So first of all, you as a programmer, it doesn't matter you are a fresher or experienced, start using AI tools. It's not a, a competition where you're saying, hey, I'm not going to use AI, let me compete with AI. You can't do that. You can't do that. You don't have to compete with AI, you have to use AI. Use it as a tool. Next, don't just stick to a programming language or a, or a framework. Of course, nowadays we learn a programming language, we learn a framework, we update, update our LinkedIn profile uh, by saying, I'm an expert in React, I'm an expert in Java. No, that's something now AI can do. What you do extra. Now that's where you have to upgrade your skill set. Maybe thinking about cloud solutions, thinking about designing an application, thinking about understanding the problem. Uh, those are the things you have to excel at. That means we don't have to learn programming now. Unfortunately, we still, unfortunately, we still have to do programming. Reason being, AI will give you solution. You have to understand what AI is giving you and that's very crucial. If you, you can't simply depend upon AI to build a, prop, build a solution and deploy on cloud, no one will trust it. In fact, most of the companies, they're not even allowing their employees to use uh, ChatGPT or Copilot. It's because their data, they want it to be secure, they don't want to make it public because AI tool use the data from the client as well. Uh, of course, they are building their own AI tools to make it work. I'm not sure how that will go because they don't have enough data to train, but still, uh, they're not allowing it. And a company will not simply trust AI software uh, and, giving, uh, and directly interacting with, the with, a, with their customers. 
I mean, think about the banks, think about hospitals, all the critical applications. We need humans there. Even for deployment, even for building, you can't simply get a solution from AI and you will deploy it. You will check, you will debug, you will refactor it. And all the things will be involved there. But what about the startups? What about some freelancing projects? I saw the demo of Devin. It can also create projects which are there on the Upwork of freelancing projects. But see, freelancing projects are not critical applications. I'm talking about the enterprise application, critical applications. Humans will be needed there. Yeah, some projects which are there on the uh, freelancing website can be done with the AI tools. But uh, overall, uh, we are not getting replaced. But yeah, the team size may be less in future because we are going to use AI tool. Now what you have to do, start using AI, upgrade yourself to some higher things which AI cannot do yet. And as the time progresses, you will know what AI can do more. Again, you have to go one step above AI. So in terms of competition, don't compete. Just try to use AI tools and learn something new which AI cannot do now. At least the creative works are safe yet. We are safe on YouTube as a trainers yet. I'm not sure in future because of OpenAI Sora. Uh, maybe I just have to say, I want to talk about Devin. Uh, ChatGPT will give the entire script and OpenAI Sora will make a video. Not sure, but we are safe now. So yeah, don't worry about Devin. Uh, it's not going to exactly replace you. But yeah, start using AI tools and uh, uh, till we have humans on Earth or on Mars, we are safe.